we now understand, Surat al kaf is directing our attention to Dajjal and the story of the young man in the cave. And Surat al kaf is directing our attention to the subject of time. That they lived in the, they slept in the cave for 300 years, was Dadu Tisa, and they added nine. Was Dadu Tisa, and they added nine, meaning their preference was for solar time, and lunar time was of secondary importance. Okay? And they were in the cave for 300 years, but every day the sunlight would enter. From one side in the morning, the next in the evening, from another side, the bodies were rolling back and forth in attraction to sunlight, therefore the importance of solar energy in Akhiro Zaman. But after 300 years, they had not aged biologically. So they were not for 300 years in biological time because they did not age. So where were they? We said they were in other worlds of space and time. And uh, since they were already in this world of space and time, and they were not in this world of space and time for 300 years, there's a paradox. And we resolve that by saying, we resolve that paradox by saying that there was constant backward and forward movement in time. And who was, who was holding on to the staff of Suleiman and Islam was able to do that backward and forward movement in time to be able to demonstrate to the jinn, oh yes, so the man is alive, he's eating, he's walking, he's talking, but he's dead. The staff allowed them to do that, to deceive the jinn. So whoever is able to corrupt time, bringing about forward and backward movement of time, changing time, would be able to deceive you. And this is what the Quran is speaking about in Surah to Tawbah. Ba'adawuza billahi min shaitani rajim. Innama nasi'u ziyadatun lil kufr. Innama nasi'u ziyadatun lil kufr. The tampering with time, corrupting time, is the road to more and more kufr. And that's what they have done. What they have done is they have succeeded. Dajjal has succeeded in transforming all of mankind into a global society now, interconnected all over the world, and interconnected in a global society which is now in universal time, which is Dajjal's system of time and have departed from lunar time. And today we ask the, the question, what's the price we will pay? When we abandon lunar time and we allowed ourselves to be embraced by solar time controlled by Dajjal, who has this capacity to move in time backward and forward, what is the price we have to pay? Are you listening to me? This is what the Prophet said, alayhis And for me, this is one of the major signs of Akhir zaman This one, the major sign of Akhir zaman He said, time will move faster and yet faster. Mm -hmm. A whole year will pass and will seem like just a month. And a whole month will pass like a week. And a whole week will pass like a day and a whole day would pass like an hour and a whole hour would pass like the amount of time it takes to kindle a fire hmm? and so the phenomenon or the perception of time moving faster and yet faster this is the proof staring you in your face that you have been embraced by the jazz system of time the price that you will pay when you are embraced by the Dajjal system of time is that your internal life will be corrupted. 
the internal life, the heart is no longer beating in harmony with the rest of Allah's creation. Your heart is now out of step with the rest of Allah's creation. So noor has to come from Allah. And noor has to pass through, and noor is not some gentleman, eh? noor is light. Noor has to pass through different worlds of space and time before it can enter into your heart. But it cannot enter into your heart when your heart is out of step with the rest of Allah's creation. It's like a motor car so the engine needs tuning. Unless you tune that engine, the engine, the car is not going to work properly. It might even be able to start. To tune your engine, you've got to return to this lunar system of time. When you are out of step, not only will you not get noor, you'll now be seeing with only one eye, just like the jar, and that's what we have today. Even the graduates of the Daru room are seeing with only one eye, the external eye, and they're internally blind. And when you're internally blind, the jal is going to take you for a ride. He's going to show you the road to Jahannam. And he'll make it look like the road to Jannah. And you'll pack your suitcase. Mama, I'm going. <laughs> I'm going to Jannah. And when you reach to London, after one year, two years, you realize, oh my gosh, this place is rotting. I was taken for a ride. I thought this was heaven. You reach to New York. You think you made it. Oh my gosh, this is the American dream that I'm now living. I can have my own house and go back to Pindi and I can boast. I've made it already. <laughs> the Jah has taken you for a ride. He took the road to Jahannam and he made it look like the road to Jannah and you swallowed that lie. Why? Because you're seeing with only one eye. And he took the road to Jannah. Yes, Jannah. He made it look like the road to Jahannam. Who wants to go back to Pakistan? No, 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 no. I prefer to live in heaven. <laughs> this is the problem we have with people who see with only one eye. And so now, when you have been embraced by this corrupt system of time, not only would you no longer have noor in your heart, you will also be internally blind and the jar will be able to deceive you and you will dance to every tune he plays. And so now the question, Sheikh, how do we get back to lunar time? How do we get the heart to once again beat in harmony with all the rest of Allah's creation? And the answer is the Quran. You have to recite the whole Quran once a month. Once a month, meaning a lunar month. You must begin the Quran when the month begins. So we have to be careful that there is evidence. For man shahida min kumushar. Those who have the evidence, the evidence, the evidence that the month has commenced. For yesum. So you must have the evidence that the month has commenced before you can recognize it has commenced. And that evidence is not a scrap of paper, an almanac, or an announcement by the government of Singapore or the government of, of Saudi Arabia, the two least reliable governments in the world. Hmm? That evidence is you must see the moon, the lunar, the, the, go look in the sky and look for the Hilal, the crescent moon in order for you to have the evidence. So now then, you begin the month by reciting, beginning the recitation of the Quran. And you complete the whole Quran in one lunar month. If you do that, and you follow the Adzar that I've given you, which is the first juice, which is the second juice, which is the third juice, and you do not chop the Quran, please, I'm writing the, the Quran and the moon methodology for reciting the Quran. 
they're following the Ajza, or the Jew, plural of Jews is Ajza. If you recite the Quran this way, guess what? Are you ready? Time will slow down. <laughs> Time will slow down. The month will pass deliciously slow. The month has not been speeding away. We've enjoyed the month. That's how you'd enjoy life if you live with lunar time. So the answer to the Jal is located in the recitation of the Quran. The Christian will have to tell me what's his way. The Hindu will have to tell me what's his way. But we will say to them, this is our way. If we recite the Quran in Arabic, to complete the whole Quran in one lunar month. Don't finish it before, unless you want to finish the Quran twice or three times in a month. Okay? Try to complete the whole Quran in one lunar month. Save the last Jews. Uh, on the 29th day, when it comes to an end, if the moon is seen, then you'll only have a few surahs, small surahs to recite, right to complete. And if the moon is not seen, then you have a few surahs to recite on the 30th day. If you do this and you're reciting the Quran in Arabic, proper Jews, proper Adza, not chopping the Quran, then you will be able to slow down time. Time will move now in, the harmo in harmony with the rest of Allah's creation. And now you'll be able to get nur in your heart and mashallah, you now be able to see with two eyes, the external eye and the internal eye.